it's never just the tune. These are the famous words of the world famous Chris Hill of Ninja Performance. Chris used to say these words often as uh, people would come to him and say, hey, I just, I just need a tune, man. That's all I need and everything would be okay. And everything would not be okay with just a tune. So here's why. So recently, old stickers here started having a little bit of a problem. On the cold start, she would beat just fine, start up just fine, drive off just fine. But I noticed that after things were warmed up and I'd be sitting there at a traffic light, suddenly she would struggle to idle. Not only would she have trouble idling, occasionally she would just stall out. Then it got worse. Even after she stalled out, it didn't want to start back up. Now, being that I'm a tuner, of course the first thing I'm going to do is start doing some data logging and see if I can do anything there to try to find out what's going on. Definitely I was able to find out that things were different when the coolant temperature was higher. And that gave me a little bit of a clue as to where to start looking for things. One place that I didn't need to look for any answers though was in the tune. Now, this car's already been tuned, running just fine. So if things start changing, it's not gonna be the tune that's changed, it's gonna be something mechanical in the car that's changed. And that's the real trick here. There's a lot of people, a lot of my customers, of course we come, we start tuning, we start running into problems, and the data log helps us to identify a little bit about where the problem is, but maybe it's correlated and not necessarily causative. So you gotta go back and do some work because one thing's for sure, tuning will never solve a mechanical problem. So it took a little time and a little research, but with the help of a good buddy of mine, also named Chris, we were able to identify two different things. Well, the first thing was that uh, down here, where a fuel pump is sitting down below there, but we've got a fuel pump relay, and we noticed that there's a connection here that it actually started melting. Things had gotten so hot from running so hard that this connection started melting. And once that connection started melting, it made it more difficult for the fuel pump to get the power that it needed. And thus, when we were trying to restart, things would not restart. So here again, mechanical issue. Although I looked at things in the AEM and data logged around start issues, there wasn't anything there that was going to tell me that this was the problem. So that was problem number one. The other part, as it turned out, when coolant temperature was warm, but idle would get bad, had everything to do with the idle control valve. Because that is going to take care of things once the engine's warmed up to keep things idling properly. And if that's not working right, then under warm conditions, it will not work correctly at all. Went in here to uh, check on my idle air control valve, which is this guy right here. So, if you want to get access to it, you'll uh, obviously pull off the uh, harness connection. It's just a little guy on the top. Press that down, pull it back out of there, and then get your intake pipe. Disconnected from your throttle body, so you have some room to get in here and take out your battery. Then you can easily use a multimeter on the ohm setting. You can get your pins in here, and you can check this. Or, as we're going to do, we're going to pull it out. Okay, so to remove the IAC, we've got two 8 millimeter. Uh, bolts there in here. <clears throat> they look like it's a nice Phillips head, but it's gonna be a little difficult to get it out with the Phillips So um, you're gonna get eight millimeter around this guy And then it's a little bit harder to see the other one is adjacent to it right down here below You can probably see just Phillips is pointing to it right there So just those two guys remove those two and take the IAC out Once you've got it removed you can actually also take out your o-ring and uh, make sure that that's still good. These guys are going to get brittle over time, so might be the right time to replace it. Twenty-nine point seven. 
29.9, but 66.5. So we go about getting a new IAC, and let's go ahead and unbox it. And take it out, and it's gonna be, have a nice cover on top of our terminals here. So once again, we're going to test, there we go, terms, test terminals one and two, two and three, four and five, and five and six, and they all should have about the same ohms across them. And we're gonna see something different with these newer models, where the older models, or the original ones, had about 30 ohms. The new models are gonna be around 40 ohms across, so we'll see that difference here. Got everything tightened back up. Plug back in the harness connector. Push till it clicks, and then we're good to go.